We are decentralizing the industry. They are, we are reimagining the world. Is your crypto working for you? It can be with yield farming. But what are the risks? Hacking, volatility, poor smart contracts, scams. Even if you overcome the risks, there are still limitations. Do you have a million dollars to invest? Yield farming is a very complex, time-consuming, and expensive process. Can you imagine that not only you need to possess advanced skills to mitigate your risk and check smart contracts, but also you need to quit your job? In order to get the highest return, you need to manage thousands of platforms and check protocols around the clock. Well, not anymore. We are proud to announce the SwissBorg Smart Yield account. It's now possible for anyone to earn yield on most of your cryptos, such as USDC, Bitcoin, Ether, BNB, and only starting with 10 euros with the tap of your finger. So how does it work? It's simple. On a daily basis, Oracle scans and monitors all the different investment opportunities and delivers for you the best investment returns. So how is that more secure? Not only do we assess the best risk reward ratio, but also your assets are protected by our NPC technology and our safety net program. And how it does deliver return? Well, because our system is scanning the market every single day, you get the optimal return on that day. How do you get started? It's easy in three different steps. The first one, you deposit. The second one, you start the yield program. And the third one, you start relaxing, enjoying your passive income. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the Smart Yields, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the new OBS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest, Christina, managing editor at Cointelegraph, a lovely lady who just came back from an amazing panel conference here in Dubai. And we're gonna give you tons of really cool content before we kick off. A shout out also to Crypto Slate. They always create summarized articles of all these interviews so that if you guys wanna read it, you can enjoy every single bit. But without further ado, Christina, it is such a pleasure to have you today. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Alex. All is great. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Thank you for coming on the show. And I'd love to kick off with a simple story about yourself. We are talking yesterday about how you fell in love with this space, the decentralized movement, Bitcoin. Just tell us something that really got you the big why that happened to you. That's a very good question. I actually, I've, I've been working a lot in the communications and in different innovative industries. Uh, I've worked before in the oil and gas sector and uh, banks and all this uh, traditional industries that, that have great smart people, but at the same time, they don't have this access availability that we can find in the space. So I think it was kind of a logical and uh, natural step for me uh, to start working with crypto because crypto is just an opportunity to, to contact the people who dare to think ambitious ideas and dare to make them happen. That's the thing. So uh, crypto is full of people and then you, you, you meet them and uh, it's a CEO, it's a, it's a, it's a billionaire, it's a, it's a guy who invented a thing and uh, he's trying to change this world. So I think the crypto now is the sector that is changing the world and that has the, the largest number of people who want to change the world. It is so true, right? There's so much meaning and depth. And you mentioned a lot of like people. You're, I, I, you told me yesterday, for me, more than the technology, it's about the people. And clearly, this, I can feel you. Mm -hmm. I can feel that meaning just by that response. And are there any specific people that you said were daring that inspired you along the way? Like people where you think, oh, this person or this talk or any specific points that really... Well, I think all the people who you meet in the industry are actually great. And uh, I totally agree that, well, I'm a journalist, so I'm working with people every day. And uh, technology is very important. Numbers are very important. But I think the people behind every project, these are the ones whom you either trust or you don't trust. 
um, definitely there are people who, who are who create myths about them in the industry uh, but there are also incredible uh, smart people I you know I, I don't want even to name some because um, maybe my biggest discoveries in terms of uh, human beings were not creators of the famous project but were some developers of mm -hmm. physicists who are working in quantum computing and trying to uh, converge this with the blockchain uh, technology um, I think the people here really don't have borders crypto people are great but I would say that I really prefer them after a glass or two because, you know, first they start talking about Lamborghini and all this stuff about the food and uh, Michelin stars, etc. And only after some time they start talking about real problems that they want to solve. Uh, they talk about politics, about economy, about the freedom of, uh, of money, uh, about the freedom of people. And that's very important in this industry as well. That makes a lot of sense. And with regards to Cointelegraph, obviously the, the biggest platform when it comes to crypto news. 2020, uh, what were some of the highlights of last year? If we look in our rear uh, mirror in the car and you're looking at last year, what are some of the topics, themes, or, or specific news where you felt, wow, oh, this is super duper cool? That, that was an insane year. Like uh, we have been in a crisis all over the world uh, with all this pandemic stuff and COVID uh, and lockdowns, but uh, people got digitalized everywhere. Yeah. Like my grandfather started talking about Bitcoin. That's insane. Yeah. And he actually, uh, he, he now has an Instagram account to follow me because we couldn't uh, communicate. I think that's actually the greatest thing that happened last year. And of course, for the crypto industry, it does mean that the adoption is right here. Like we have faith. Paul, we have Mastercard today who announced uh, that uh, it, it will accept it. And uh, um, I think that that is the biggest news for all of us. I mean, there is the five boom, etc. There is the Bitcoin's price. But I think it's very important. And I admit that the responsibility of the media is also to educate about this. And the importance, uh, the most important thing that is happening is the real adoption of the technology. It's not about price, it's not about money, it's not about Lamborghini. It's about how we change the world, how we give access to people who maybe before didn't have access to this decentralized technology in different sectors. So all about the access, is, is that really, uh, just going back on what you said about 2020, I think it's so true what you're saying. Even my mom, she uses WhatsApp, she now uses Signal, you know, so it feels like this whole crisis, this health crisis, really accelerated, you know, just put technology on, on steroids and ooh, just took off like that, right? We started dancing on Zoom. Like I actually <laughs> launched my digital platform for dancing because I missed so much dancing in the beginning and nobody did that like back in March. And then in April, everybody started doing everything online. You remember also in the events business, like yeah. March was a time when there were no conferences at all. Everything was locked down. And then in April, like every day you have a conference. <laughs> I speak like in the, in the morning, in the afternoon. I had a panel once at three in the morning. Uh, I will never do this again. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so cool. It's so true, right? Either you, it puts us in a position where you have to be creative, right? And you have to think, seek for new solutions to solve the current problem. So the mindset has changed our mindset a lot, I guess, right? Yeah, I also think that people started... Um, checking sources more of us here. Yeah. Also on the basis of the COVID thing, like uh, if you check the worldometers.com uh, uh, on um, the statistics of the traffic for that side, yeah. uh, that is on only stats about the COVID case, etc. Like it had a boom of, I don't know, like boost of, uh, 500% of traffic last year because people started to check the sources because they were so overwhelmed by the news, fake news, depressive news about COVID. So they just started checking the facts uh, themselves and the facts are numbers. And numbers are the most objective facts in the industry, whichever it is. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so like in terms of Bitcoin itself in this space, is it Bitcoin that you're the most interested at the moment? Is it uh, specific projects? Is it an asset class, a sub asset class, exchanges, decentralized exchanges, yield farming? I mean, there's so much in the news. Like, what are some of those specific parts that you really feel like, oh, that's something that I really like to hear more about or learn more about? It's a very good question because I think that, well, 
especially when we work in, a, in journalism. Uh, of course, Bitcoin is the thing that everybody uh, is searching for. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's very important for the media to create not only clickbait articles. And uh, in my opinion, what is the most interesting is the application of blockchain technology. Uh, could it be in the healthcare industry, in, uh, I don't know, tracking of wine, in the art business, in uh, uh, providing access to the unbanked. But that's the thing. I mean, I think Bitcoin is just like a, a a name that became um, so popular all around the world. I remember it Davos at the World Economic Forum yeah. three years ago. It was uh, January 2018, so just after the, the boom of the price. Yeah. And uh, everybody was talking about blockchain, but they decided that the, the community of the World Economic Forum preferred not to combine this two, um, this two concepts, phenomena. Blockchain is not Bitcoin and Bitcoin is not blockchain. It's not true, actually. Uh, but so for me, Bitcoin is an opportunity to talk about blockchain in mm -hmm. general, because Bitcoin is the most famous use case of, uh, of a blockchain network. And it's uh, simple maybe to explain, but there is so much behind. Yeah, you mentioned, well, exchanges, it's, it's in the financial industry, but uh, blockchain actually can be applied with whichever data we want. And that is very important. Would it be fair to say that uh, in that case you talked about healthcare, you talked about art, uh, collectibles and stuff like that. I is it fair to say that you're interested in F NFTs? Is that one of those is one Yeah, of those that's is definitely that really... one of the highlights of the last year. Yes, that's very interesting. Even though like, I personally um, don't want to, <laughs> to own any NFT for the moment. Like nothing, nothing caught my attention so much. But I think that's... I, I would... I would be even maybe idealistic, a bit ambitious, uh, what I say, but I really dream of a moment when um, all the art, the natural, uh, the historical heritage, for example, of the, of the Italian country where I live, uh, will be tokenized because I think this is the way to uh, to save this uh, cultural heritage that we have because in Italy we have like, more art and architectural uh, uh, wonders than uh, than we can permit ourselves to, to to keep. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And because you're so much into people, uh, this really leads me to a question, which I'm sure you'll be interested in. What do we? What about tokenization of people, of celebrities, of football players, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, all these things? Do Do you think that's a, a cool case or a cool use case of the blockchain? Because you're saying like. Bitcoin is cool, but I, I want the blockchain to have other real world use cases. Is that a use case that you find interesting? Because you know when VC people invest in a company, they usually say, we invest in the people first, right? So why not just invest in a token? Like if, uh, if, if you feel like, okay, Justin Bieber is gonna sell you know, 10 times more albums in the future, you can buy his token and sell it later. No, is that a bit, a bit no, too far-fetched? That's a very great question. Yeah, actually, I think that would maybe not to uh, tokenize parts of people. No, maybe what? maybe J Lo already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> but I think it, it could be quite popular. Yeah, that would well, be super well, popular. People are what can be solved because uh, the others want to identify themselves with people. Yeah. And um, if we have a person who represents a project or a technology, I think that's actually the case. A very important case for the blockchain industry. When we have a celebrity who enters the space, it becomes a news in all the media, in all the social media. Uh, and yeah, we need more celebrities uh, involved. Which sector do you think would be the most popular? In Italy, you have football players. Uh, would it be a singer? Like if, for, for everyone to use the blockchain without even knowing they're using the blockchain, is there a specific yes. type of person that you think would uh, tokenization that would right now like there's a really cool project called Chili's and they're they're actually tokenizing football clubs like so you can buy you can own tokens for the Real Madrid and stuff like that. Yeah, that was I think the, the largest application in, in the sport uh, industry last year, football. So I I wish I would see this in other uh, sports as well, uh, rugby and I don't know figure skating and uh, Olympic games could all be tokenized as well and so in terms of 20 we talked about 2020 and uh, some of the t highlights and news that that you were personally interested in uh what about 2021 is there anything in particular that you look forward to uh anything that you think that coin telegraph will probably cover because this seems to be like it's trending or will trend uh in the upcoming you know six to 12 months so many things happening now like 
we are still in February, right? And already, uh, well, we, we, we had Elon Musk who entered totally space. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, a tweet that changed the history. Uh, we have real adoption with the MasterCard. We have um, very interesting regulatory uh, things that have been happening, though I would like to say that um, uh, there was Cointelegraph Top 100 that has been oh, released so yesterday. Cool. And um, one of the people featured there was Hester Peace, the SEC commissioner. And uh, uh, I, I hope that she was pleased that she was featured. She was a 20 something um, number. But uh, she, she wrote a tweet um, reposting the, uh, the, the coin tag of Top 100 saying that I wish the day will come when any Top 100 or 50 blockchain notable people will have no regulators in it. Mm. And that's a very interesting thing, in my opinion, because while uh, we are decentralizing um, the industry, they are, we are reimagining the world. And um, regulation is very important, but regulation is given assistance to the sector. Yeah. But it's not that regulation is actually changing the idea of the space. And the idea of the space is a decentralization. Yeah. So yes, this for sure adoption, um, well, experiments on the national levels as well are very interesting. Uh, central bank digital currency, something that um, I'm really following a lot. So a lot of cool stuff is happening. That's really a good point, you know, like the whole regulatory aspect. Can we do something completely without the lawyers and the regulatory frameworks? And so people are actually scared of it. Like uh, I remember Joseph from Shift Network, he came on the show and he said basically that he was concerned about DEXs, right? You know, like the regulatory or the regulators going after the DEXs and shutting some down this year. But hopefully let's keep it positive. Um, and speaking of positive. The conference yesterday, you moderated a panel, which was very nice. It was technical, but it was also human. It was, you, you kept it out. It wasn't too intense, too geeky. Um, and you ended with a very nice quote, right? So I'd love you to share that again, because obviously it's, maybe we don't have the footage out there. So uh, yeah, can you tell us that, what was the conclusion of that panel? Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I think that uh, the most important thing that we have in the space uh, is human beings and the language that we all speak it can be English it can be French it can be Italian it can be Arabic and everybody has his own background and uh, uh, his own situation in his country but what really unites us all are in my opinion two things and numbers and code this is something that is universal mm. and also our eyes shiny eyes when you really can look into the eyes of a person and look to the world through the eyes of another person. That's very important. So we can, uh, we can speak English, we can speak whichever language we want, but our eyes always tell the truth. That's a really good point. If you guys agree that the universal language is code, is something that connects us no matter the background, no matter the language, the ethnic background, anything, Please uh, agree or please uh, feel free to agree in the comments sec section below if you have any other angles, share that as feel well. Feel free, free also to disagree. Yeah, feel free to disagree as well. Yeah. That's, that's why I was laughing. I was like, feel free to no, agree. I'm like, because <laughs> actually, it's interesting. Because, I don't know, like, do you understand code? Oh, I can read a little bit, just yeah, the basics. You know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, Python. Okay, uh, Python. My grandfather definitely <laughs> can read code. So maybe it's not as universal as it is, but he definitely can, uh, can learn it. Well, daddy. And grandfather, please start coding. <laughs> start coding. Start coding. There's some cool games for that to learn how to code, you know. But it's been absolutely an absolute pleasure having you, Christina. Like you've been uh, really like a uh, sunlight at the conference for the past two days. You know, giving your 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 utmost during the the conference and 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 talks. Anything else that you'd like to share with the community before we? we I love we, uh... you. I love you, crypto community. Really, keep being so great. And Thank you very much. We'll put also your Twitter feed below so people can follow you. Um, you, you post some cool stuff as well. You need to be a little more active. We need to see more. Okay, but, uh... I, need, I need to work less and tweet more. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Jay would be happy. <laughs> you guys had it there. So this is Christina, so the managing editor at Cointelegraph. Super cool girl. You'll probably bump into her in one of the conferences, either as a moderator or as a speaker. And if you guys like the content, of course, please support us by subscribing and blasting that bell notification so that you get access to all these timeless interviews and learn some cool stuff with some cool people. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week, premiering the PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. Take care, guys. Yeah.